Public Works and Safety Standing Committee to order. We want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Public comment is welcome. Anyone wishing to speak on any item on the Standing Committee agenda may do so when the item is up for discussion. You will have three minutes to state your comments. Please come forward to the table and you will be recognized. For accurate recording purposes, we ask all to speak directly <coughs> into the microphone. Roll call. Roll call, Brian. Here. Bill Brooks. Here. Mark Lewis. Here. Maddow. Walker. Here. Okay. Here. You've all had a few moments to look at there, actually a few days to look at the minutes of last meeting. Move to approve minutes of last meeting. Second. Second. All those in, uh, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign, ayes have it. You got to do this quick. All right, item number one takes us to our uh, committee agenda. We have five items. Uh, one of them is a request from Mount Carmel Church of God in Christ for the honorary street name recognized as Bishop Urban Sims Jr. Bob Roddy. Yes, um, this is Bob Roddy, Public Works Director. Uh, the Public Works Department uh, received a request to do an honorary naming of 12th Street uh, from, from Garfield. Garfield, uh, going north towards Jersey Creek. Oh, excuse me. Lydiana LaVoy is with me. She's a traffic engineer. She did all the work. I'm just sitting in trying to help to, through the process. Um, as part of the program, we generally require the petitioner to give us a signed petition of the people that are uh, supportive. Um, on 12th Street, there is a total of eight homes. Uh, six of the eight homes uh, uh, supported the re renaming or to an honorary status. Um, the rest of the property is either owned by Mount Carmel or is in the land bank. So six of the eight residents uh, are supportive. Obviously, Mount Carmel uh, is uh, supportive of the renaming. Um, uh, yeah, I just as a side note, um, the the packet that they, they submitted was was quite substantive. You know, it was probably one of the best submittals I think we've seen as far as you know the work that they put into it to demonstrate the. Uh, hard work that Bishop Sims has done in this community over the years. So the, the our pro policy is for us to bring this to the standing committee for consideration to for the honorary naming uh, and if they so approve then it would go to the full commission for ultimate uh, either acceptance or rejection. We stand for questions. So how much does it cost? Excuse me? How much does it cost us? Um, minimal. All, all it does is consist of a, a number of uh, small signs that are added below the existing sign names. Okay. We do it all in-house, so it's uh, very low cost. Thank you. Move approval. I got it. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Um, I just wanted to know... Who, who set up for the renaming of the street uh, on 12th Street? The, the policy that we have, that I believe was shared with you, uh, that that's, was laid out, I don't know, perhaps 10 years ago, uh -huh. says that the submissions can either go to the commissioner or to the public works director. And so in this case, they went to the public works department. So that's the this procedure of how it came to this point. Okay. Okay. Well, I'd like to speak to that. If, if the, if the uh, current policy does say that it's conflicting to me to um, receive certain documents that have supposedly been sent from the public work director to me, as in just two weeks ago, I received one for um, Reverend Sippel, and I was asked to approve it. But then in this case, is you know, with this street name, it's not sent for approval by me, so I get confused when that happens. So if that is what the policy says, that's okay, but I, I like to actually have a copy of it, which I do not have a copy of it, which is why I brought it up at this, in this moment. We'll, we'll certainly get you a copy of it. Um, I'm not aware of sending you anything, Commissioner, so I don't know who this request came to you from. Okay, well, by way of the Secretary, I received a request. Yeah. Um, sometimes, the, Timothy. sometimes the citizens could be sending them directly to you. Uh, Lydiana, are you aware of any that we've received? No, no reason. Okay. 
Well, that it just seems like it's confusing to me for one person to be able to prove it, and then for you know it, it should seem like it should be a single thing because I I get lost in translation if I don't know that there's a street being renamed, and I have people from the community who call me and say, well, who is this person? What has this person done? Why is my street being named? So that's the concern for me as right. an elected official. It seems some of that falls on our shoulders. Right. If it, but but Mr. Sims is an outstanding person in the community, and I, I don't have a problem with that, right. but it just seems a little conflict and to me that I receive certain ones in which I'm asked to have uh, a say-so in, and then there's other ones that go, and I don't even really know about it until I get it on my packet. Obviously, the approval rests with the commission. All staff does is compile the information and make sure that they have submitted the documents uh, as to the validity of the person's status and the support that exists in the community. That's all we're doing. I've, I've never received any letter or anything from anybody other than when they come through the standing committee. Right. So uh, uh, maybe it was somebody else, I don't know. Okay. You comment? Well, I just have a question. This is just educational for myself. Um, this doesn't change the actual billing address of any homes, right? No. We, we um, we've moved away from changing any, f formally changing the street name because it gets into a lot of complications. And so f for the last 10 or 15 years, all I can ever recall is just doing honorary naming. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. There's been a motion made. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Second. Uh, any more questions? Roll call on the motion. Roll call, Brian. Aye. Bill Brooks. Aye. Mark Lee. Aye. Aye. Walker. Aye. Walker. Aye. Aye. Item number two is a resolution approving a special permit to allow temporary closure for 12th Street between Minnesota and State Avenue on May 3rd during the downtown Cinco de Mayo Festival. Vote approval. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> On this motion's been made and seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Roll call, Brian. Aye. Bill Brooks. Aye. Kane. Aye. 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 Walker. Aye. Parker. Aye. All right. Item number three: an ordinance regarding regulation of discharges from industrial facilities to the municipal storm sewer system. Misty Brown. Good evening, commissioners. This is a third ordinance change that I'm here before you seeking for additional legal authority. This request stems from the provisions of the <coughs> federal consent decree that we entered into. This particular ordinance change sets up a couple new definitions, but the crux of it creates a new cat category where we're monitor monitoring the discharge from industrial facilities that discharge into the storm sewer. It basically creates a registry that these facilities have to be part of and requires that they have stormwater prevention plans so they're not discharging things that could affect the stormwater. Bill Heatherman is here. He has had a meeting with the community about this and can provide some more practical insight. Thank you, Misty. Uh, we did a briefing on this program back in December to Public Works Standing Committee. It is a mandated aspect of our stormwater program. Uh, the range of industries that we are required to put on our registry actually turns out to be fairly narrow. There are only 12 that meet the definition, so it's not every industrial user in the city. We held a information meeting about a, three weeks ago. Um, six of the 12 did come. All, all of the 12 were invited. Uh, the folks that came are generally environmental compliance type experts with those industries already. There wasn't really anything we told them about that struck them as unusual compared to things they're already required to do with the state. Our commitment was to be to use good common sense as we roll this program out, um, get to know them, kind of get to know their role, our role, and make sure that we're really just providing quality assurance that the standards and expectations that already exist under most state programs that we have some eyes and ears locally. So we got a few comments. Um, they really weren't comments that needed to change the ordinance. They were more suggestions on how we run the program. They were all very agreeable, and so uh, we think we're ready for this program to go forward. Okay, how? What about the six that didn't attend? 
Um, you know, we, we invited all and we gave an opportunity for comment. We really just didn't, um, I don't think we just registered really that high on, on their radar screen. I don't know that we heard anything from any of them. Ever. Are we going to have a, an issue with their compliance? I mean, who are they? Do we do we have a list of, of the non of what these twelve industries are? The six that are apparently on board and the six that aren't. Well, I I, I I can get that for you, Commissioner. I don't have it. I, I wouldn't interpret the ones that didn't come as being not on board. Um, Really, the kind of program we have isn't so unusual compared to things that they're already running. And if we do find a difficulty, we'll we'll work that through with them. But I will get you a copy of the attendee list. Okay, thank you. I move the approval. Second. Any more questions? Roll call. Roll call. Brian. Aye. Bill Brooke. Aye. Markley. Aye. Mara. Aye. Walker. Aye. Okay. Aye. Our last item, number five, is a presentation on the concept of insured sewer and water residential service number line. Four. Well, I'm sorry, four. number four. Hike and bike. Hike and bike. I'm, I apologize. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Hike and bike. You got some people here. Are you trying to cut my show short? <laughs> Steve Daly. Steve Daly is the general manager of Fairfax Drainage District. Um, this evening we were reporting back to the standing committee in compliance with the interlocal agreement that exists between the unified government and Fairfax Drainage District. Uh, the, the agreement that was passed last year required uh, the two public works and the drainage district to come back and report to the standing committee about the possible options for hike and bike trails along uh, the drainage district works and in compliance with that that's why we are here this evening um, the two staffs looked at five different options um, in relation to possible trails um, the first one is um, basically this is a picture of Fairfax aerial with this is the north this is call point park down here on the bottom and this is the Fairfax bridge going into Missouri the first trail we looked at was the, being up on the levee road itself which is basically the, the top road system that exists down there and we looked at this and this is the road that uh, obviously you're closest to a, a lot of the industrial structures along the whole berm and in addition it's you know it has other complications in that there's secure the security measures are heightened as you go up on this upper level the next option we looked at um, was something similar where we we're still up on top of the trail um, but we shortened the path um, just go, so that we from call point call point is going to connect to the to the Missouri trail system and Fairfax I'm mean, excuse me and the Jersey Creek system eventually but, but this would just be a deadhead where you'd go out and you'd come back and you'd get back on the the trail system that goes throughout the rest of the metro area the third option we looked at um, is going down on the shelf. If you look at this, um, you know, many of the river dikes you see, you know, you have an elevated area where you are actually preventing the, wa the river water from coming in. But there's, in this particular case, there's a big shelf. Now, how wide is that, Steve? It's 100 yards at points, maybe? Yeah. So this is generally uh, dry except in flood conditions. In fact, I think you don't you grow 
uh, green on that so yeah so um, this concept would be basically you are up on the trail when you're uh, down at call point you come up here and you do drop down to the shelf of uh, the, F the Fairfax works it still offers a majestic view of the downtown area as does call point um, there is a trail down there the, the nice thing about this feature is that we don't get involved in interfering with the drainage district nor do we uh, compromise some of the greater con security concerns that exist on the upper level the fourth one is basically taking that concept uh, of number three and taking it on the lower shelf and going all the way around uh, and staying on the shelf until you basically come to the end of the shelf or ultimately you would uh, use get out of take, take the, the, the Fairfax Bridge over into Missouri um, we didn't see a need for this one at this time because a it's a whole lot to uh, select at any one time that would be a lot of road work to do and because Fairfax Bridge is going to be under construction this would actually go nowhere until the Fairfax Bridge is completed and uh, you this would be a dead end um, the plan that exists for Fairfax Bridge is that there will be a bike lane that crosses into Missouri and at that time if this road was considered that would probably be the appropriate time to uh, take this much larger undertaking and uh, expand the, the shelf trail uh, all the way over to Highway 69 and the last one is really just uh, to reflect the fact that if we proceed with uh, one of these uh, lower shelf ones ultimately you're going to have to connect uh, the shelf uh, site up to uh, the Fairfax uh, Steve is there anything you'd like to add or uh, no the only thing uh, I might add is uh, this question has been uh, asked of us for several weeks or weeks months or a few years now we've given a lot of levy tours a lot of uh, educational um, time to uh, to different interested parties and uh, Bob approached me uh, sometime uh, around I guess the first of the year to sit down and try to you know come to some kind of an agreement for for uh, doable options and so we have I think we've arrived at something I think the the option we would recommend that has merit to us right now is the uh, option number two where we basically go down to the lower shelf and we go out a couple thousand feet or I don't know if that's or yards but as you go this portion and the reason why we're recommending this one a it, it doesn't interfere with their operations B it limits the, the our restoration efforts uh, on this trail um, my concern is if you try to do all this at once um, we won't live up to the expectations of having a decent trail system we have to learn uh, as we go along and uh, try to do a, a much more limited basis as we work out the arrangements between uh, the public work staff and Fairfax as to the operational hours who's cleaning who's monitoring who's maintaining the trail after a flood condition so um, that's our report uh, and if we were uh, I think I think we're in agreement that if um, that if we were told which one we'd recommend we'd recommend the shelf the short route for the time being so Bob the the one that you're recommending is it the start of that option four so is option two that little section before it goes further down the shelf for option four say that again please yeah so this is that no, that's, that's it that's it option three. Oh, it's no option three. no it's yeah, yeah i was thinking of two so this little segment that's is that the same one. little segment that's at the start of option four say that i'm still not following is this segment the same segment that's yes, the beginning yes, of option yes. four yes it so that if we wanted place. to expand later this is what right. we would expand you, from. you'd be down on the shelf and you would just go further okay. well, there, this one's not on no, the I, I know it's number three okay yeah, there we go. This, is, this is the one yeah from point E it would ultimately extend all the way around so hey. if we use option two what happens if we want to do option four if it's not already part of that 
I guess I was thinking that was the start of that so that if we wanted to expand later, we already had that first section done. If you, if you want, to, no, this is the correct, if you want to go on the shelf, if you're going to be on the shelf, this is the correct one to start with. If you said you wanted to be up on the, um, if you wanted to be up on the top, that would be number two, where you're, you're basically hard surfacing. Um, however, um, I think it's only fair to say that Fairfax Drainage District is a very unique levy system. And there's, uh, most levy systems do not have the, the number of structures per mile to maintain this levy. This is, this is a levy that's built out of sand. And it, most levees it, it have some earth and structure, and it, it requires unique <coughs> operational understanding to make sure that this levy integrity is not breached. Is this the one you want us to, to vote no, on? I, w I would, we recommend the lower one, all number right, so three. You're doing the lower, okay. you, all right, so you're doing three, but it still goes all the way around. Or ult ult ultimately, ultimately. All right, so we're going to start where it's, it's just a little bit. Lower, lower, lower levy, the lower levy start. Okay. And then ultimately, when Highway 69 is uh, a trail that goes into Missouri, that would be the time to start extending this. And the, even this one could be extended, you know, over the years. But Mr. Roddy, uh, that shelf that you're talking about, who owns that shelf? I believe it's the drainage district. That they they have respons they have this responsibility of. It. Where's the high water mark of the river? I thought the the state owned it on both sides up to the high water mark. No. No? No. It's not there. So are, are you saying that if we want to go with option four, we have something in place that will, the agreement is there? Th three could be expanded to four. Um, one, of the, one of the things that uh, uh, will have to be worked out is, is uh, uh, first of all, we have to get approval from the Corps if there's any uh, gates or structures that are part of the trail system that's put down in the floodway within a certain distance of the levee. The second thing is that, that the drainage board has uh, emphasized is we want to make sure that there cannot be any traversing from the levee or from the, uh, from the path along the river's edge back up onto the levee to start interfering with those flood control works that we're so concerned about. So we're open. We're open to it. We we uh, uh, don't mind, uh, you know, all the, those considerations. But we need to make sure that that they're safeguarded by way of, uh, you know, however. The, the one good thing about being down on the shelf is the whole uh, river dike is uh, armored with a lot of riprats, riprat stones. You know, they're like two and three feet. You know, it would be extremely difficult for someone to, they'd have to get on their hands and knees to crawl up through this rock bed uh, going up to the top. So there's some natural defense to the upper uh, works uh, along the levee. And I, I would emphasize that this is a trial. You know, we're recommending that we do this and see what we learn, and hopefully it'll work and everyone will be happy with it. But, uh, you know, it might be, we might find that, you know, we have too, too much vandalism down there. I don't know. I don't think so. Generally, we've not had vandalism along the river. All right, so we're saying we want to go with option three, but it, after we've done this for a while and figure everything out, it'll go into option four. That's correct. How far is that? This distance all the way it's around? It's about four and a half miles or so. The, the I, mean, I meant the... That distance there, probably 1,000 feet or 1,200 feet, not very far. One of, the, one of the problems that, that, that we would encounter, and that's why it deadheads there, is there's an outfall structure from Magellan Pipeline that is, uh, is very close to the river, the levee toe and also the river. So it'd have to be some, some safety precautions built into traversing over that before you could proceed on into option four. That's why it ends at option three. Will this be down on the... Down what we call the maintenance road. We have a maintenance road that begins on the south end. And then as you go that northeasterly direction, it pulls away from the maintenance road. And a new road would, would have to be constructed or a, a trailway to hug along the river's edge. Would it be paved or would it just be graded? Well, it's 
We would probably use asphalt chips initially or some kind of crushed limestone. Um, I don't I don't plan on paving it yeah. at this time. Not where it'd be floodable. No. I, well, uh, there's a more fundamental reason. I don't have the money. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Well, waving that one away. <laughs> Yeah, how much is it going to cost us? <laughs> uh, this portion, not much at all. I think we're between the two staffs, we'll be able to work it out. <coughs> Move to accept recommendations of number three. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any more questions? Roll call on the uh, motion. Roll call, Brian. Hi. Aye. 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 Walker? Aye. Aye. Now our last item. Our last item is in presentation on the concept of insured sewer water residential service lines and possible endorsement of program for KCK. And you have somebody from BPU yes, to help uh, you today. Yes. Jim Epp, uh, the director of water for BPU, he's here to join us. Um, Good evening. Uh, we're here to talk about um, insured um, water and sewer lines. Um, just as a backdrop, um, generally, you know, all of us ha in our homes, we have uh, the city lines, whether it's the wastewater line or whether it's the BPU water line at the street edge. And then we have a line that basically brings that service into or out of our house. This s line here, the two service lines, are the responsibility of the homeowners. And um, many homeowners are A, unaware of this, or and they certainly don't know that their homeowner's insurance doesn't cover it. So when these lines fail, you know, they have a big surprise. As a result, um, there's been a number of companies coming around to the different communities offering to provide private insurance for insuring these lines. The, the nature of the, uh, there's at least three companies that have sent flyers out uh, to our community at different times. Um, at least one of them is looking for uh, government rec uh, re uh, recommendation. Um, what we're proposing is that um, we put out a basically a notice of need or take letters of uh, interest from the different providers and see if, in fact, which one would be the one we'd recommend to the community. I think the community is looking to us to help them, A, find out if the company is legitimate, B, if it's someone that we would uh, recommend that we do business in our community, and um, so it's really just a concept. You, we can do it or we cannot do it. It's really, uh, and but I do think that in our older community, this is probably something that is very, in, it's a high interest in the community. I know Jim has a lot of old uh, water lines and I know there's certainly a lot of old sewer lines that are gonna break and somebody's gonna have a surprise. Commissioner Walker. Um, <clears throat> at the last National League of Cities, the mayor and I met with an individual, and I can't recall the company. I mean, I'm sure there's a number of them, but their basic proposal was they would agree to ensure everybody within this community. It's a voluntary program. I forget how much he said it was a month, but when you compute what it would cost to replace your water line, it was well spent money. And I think what we need to do, rather than you know, go about studying a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, you're, it's just like insurance. It's not required, but, you know, you take the risk, you take the responsibility. I think we need to move this program along, and I, I would be one if we agree as a committee to make the recommendation that we proceed with uh, implementing this program subject to you coming back with a recommendation of which company or at what cost and so forth. I know we were quoted various numbers per house and it covered that quote covered both the water line and the sewer line. And 
you've ever had a sewer line go south on you or a water line, you, you quickly learn how expensive it is to get it repaired. It, it was it was re relatively cheap, like ten bucks a month right. or twelve bucks a month, something like that. And for people in newer homes, it might be less of a less of a value. But for people in older homes, thirty years plus, I think it would be foolish not to not to have it at right. have it on your bill. Right. And, and I want to commend the, the commissioners. A number of the commissioners brought this forward after the visiting one of the uh, national programs. They came back with this uh, to, for us to look into it. And we were, obviously there's one program that seems to be uh, stronger than the others. However, uh, each one has their own issue of rates, experience, whether or not, you know, what their claim level is. Uh, you know whether they use local contractors or not. So there's a variety of things we want to review to make sure that we're, you know, whoever we recommend there at least have a decent review of all parties. Uh, for the record, it, I, I met with this guy and the mayor, but I want the record to reflect that Commissioner Maddox first brought it to the attention of of the mayor, and we happened to be at a conference where this guy was available and, and talked to us. So. This wasn't something that I came up with, but he learned it at NLC, which is obviously one reason commissioners should go to the NLC, because even if you only capture one idea and bring it back home, it can be a, it can be a great benefit to the community, and they have the programs. And I'm not going this year, so <laughs> I'm not trying to sell a ticket for myself. I think what we need to do is uh, have a motion uh, made that uh, would uh, direct staff to uh, uh, investigate and bring back a recommendation for the implementation of this program. And I would defer to Commissioner Maddox to make that motion, if he would. Or if he wants to. If he doesn't, I will. Well, I would okay. like to make a comment. Uh, you know, as a BPU representative, I have received many comments from uh, concerned citizens about the letters that they've received, wanting to know who is, who's, you know, uh, representing these companies and uh, whether or not any of them are actually coming from either the city or, or the state or, or the BPU themselves. So uh, we've had many discussions in our, in our board of director meetings about the idea of uh, somebody vetting these companies and find out who would be a good fit for our city if, if not just one, if maybe if we have to limit to a couple or, or three, but just something to get out to the to citizens so that they understand uh, what they're getting for their money and that it's, you know, proving that it's a reputable company by as much as you can by investigation. So I'd really like to see this go through. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bryant. And just, just to let you know, what Bob and I were thinking as far as due process, um, I have discussed it with the general manager, Don Gray, BPU. Um, he is not opposed to it. Uh, we felt that this committee was the appropriate place to first bring it. Uh, there's BPU representation on this, this committee uh, to entertain the idea, and then we'd further investigate um, based upon direction of this committee, and then bring it back both to Don Gray, the board, Commissioners, if necessary, um, to get the final blessing on it. But um, uh, to what Hal said, if I had a new home, wouldn't touch insurance. If I had a, a 50 to 80 year old galvanized line on on my house, I'd be all over it. Well, if it's a legitimate company, you, and that's part of the process. Well, I'm. Deferring to him to make the motion. Well, I, I thought he already did. Well, all right. he was trying. Did you make? <laughs> no, I didn't make the motion, but I make the motion that the staff move forward uh, to come back with a presentation after us working in unison with the BPU uh, to move forward with a plan to uh, move forward one of the companies in regards to underground water line. So, I would be very happy to second that motion. Uh, <laughs> are there any questions? Roll call on the motion. Aye. 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 Motion passes. That concludes our meeting, and thank you for your attendance. Thank you.